Hello there and welcome. My name is Liesl Teversham and I'm from SavvySelfGrowth.com. I'd love to introduce you to my friend and colleague, Thomas Broeker. I met Thomas in a course that we were both in online. We had an inspiring conversation after that about marketing for sensitive people. And I asked him whether I could interview him so I can share with you what was so inspiring for me on that day. So I've got Thomas here and let me share a little bit about him. He says, most heart-driven entrepreneurs don't know how to find their ideal clients. They're overwhelmed and they don't have a clear marketing strategy. And that's why Thomas helps them through authentic, heart-driven marketing to gain freedom and joy in what they are doing. I so love that. So welcome, Thomas. It's so great to have you today. Thank you so much. And I'm so happy to be here with you. <laughs> Thank you, Thomas. So I can't wait to share with our listeners what was so inspiring for me on the day that we chatted last time. And I want to jump in with this question because that was what really caught my attention is how you got into this work that you're doing now and why is it so important for you? Um, if you can start there for us. Yes, so I, I think the story started back then when I had a burnout because I was really not in contact with myself. And that's when my conscious journey started of like discovering who I am and what I really care about. And I was self-employed already and at that time and everything I found online or in the marketing world was based on manipulation and like getting customers and like the weapons of marketing and like seeing like it's like a hunt and like your customers are the prey and it felt so off and still I needed to make money to to make a living so it was a really deep dilemma and frustration like either I'm true to myself and I don't have any customers or I do what all the marketers say and like just like get them and shoot customers or whatever and but I cannot do it. So I just cannot do it or couldn't do it. Um, and then I started discovering or because I really went into this field like 24 seven, it, it kept me awake at nights. <laughs> you, can, you can imagine. Um, and then one puzzle piece at a time, I discovered like tools for what I call authentic marketing. So things I could say or methods I could use to reach out to customers, but in a way, like instead of selling, making an invitation, for example. Um, so this shift of energy, so the tools are nearly the same like in normal marketing, but it comes from the heart and not from the mind, and that makes all the difference. And what happens then if you do it is that you get the customers that you love and that you can support, um, and you can market so it's it's coming together and this is where i found like a great relief because it really took me over seven years now to gather these tools and like um make a complete puzzle out of the several puzzle pieces so that it's a strategy that doesn't have a hole in the middle where you feel like okay and now the whole thing collapses because something is missing but now it's in the last year it has become smooth and yeah and much more fun and much more effective. So this is also one part which I love. It's so much easier to just be nice to people and invite them instead of shooting at them because like if you <laughs> shoot at them, they run away. If you're nice, they want to come to you. So I don't understand why there are so few people who want to do authentic marketing, but I'm really happy to be here on this call and, and share it with you. Because I think yes. especially highly sensitive people and I'm highly sensitive myself, so this is also where the struggle came from. If I wouldn't have felt my heart, all good. I would have just manipulated people, but I just couldn't do it. So this is how this came together. Yes, and I'm so glad that you mentioned the highly sensitive part. Um, those are the people that I work with, and that's exactly why we connected so well, because I think we're so on the same page with that as um, the kind of marketing language that's out there, usually like you call shooting, we, we talk in English about the target market. So <laughs> it's like you put them there on a pin and, you know, you have to yes. shoot at them with an arrow or a gun or something to, to hit the target. Mm -hmm. um, and if, if you could perhaps also share a little bit about 
um, sort of how you started doing this work with sensitive people um, because you were, as far as I can remember, more into video or TV, somewhere like that. that that's kind of the background that you came from, marketing in the traditional sense. Yes, so I studied movies and television and was a cameraman on TV. And then I switched and was wondering, but like, what should I like put in front of the camera? And then I started my journey with becoming a communication trainer and like communication because marketing is communication in the end. So I just love communication and like also having, yeah, having the customer on one side and the coach on one on the other side and like bringing them together. This is for me communication. So this is my background. Um, and then I had my burnout because like I was trying to do it the old way, like just fit in somewhere in society and all the problems like most highly sensitive people have like, okay, this spot is for me, but how do I get in? It's like way too small. And I tried to squeeze, but it just didn't really work out. So burnout, which I'm like highly like so grateful now <laughs> after having yeah having gone through a lot of stuff and then yes i started like i got aware of this um topic and the name highly high sensitivity and this wow. is how i started my own self-discovery wow. and also then it just felt right to share it and to give talks and then it went really fast that within one year like the first talk there were two people the uh, 12th talk there were 75 and i had oh, an wow. organic reach on facebook um of over 15000 people wow. it's so funny i've still the screenshot like invited 150 um the people who said i'm coming 250 uh, organic reach uh, 15000 and wow. in the end really 75 were in the room um and the room was full like it was not a single person would have fit in there Yes, and the way how, they, how this worked out was that the tools I had learned before and that I was still learning regarding marketing fall into place. Um, so also the marketing that I'm talking about is not only working in other niches, like when you do it like where people are a lot in the head, but really for heart-centered people. And this is special because if you have people who are only in the mind, mind-based marketing works for them. But if you are yourself highly sensitive and you have highly sensitive customers, it just doesn't work. It's just they, in a glimpse of the second, they feel this is off. It's not for me. Yeah. Or that when you invite, invite, and this is part of the marketing for me, to let go all expectation, like everything which is here for every workshop, I had to surrender everything, every self-interest than just right. doing the workshop and saying, I'm doing it. I'm just praying to God that I have the money for next month's rent. And it is true to stay in this place instead of, oh, I need 20 customers. I want 20 customers. How to get more? How to improve my conversion rate? And uh, all that kind of yes. stuff. When it comes from here. Yes. And if you're resting in your heart and you really just want to serve and then have the question, but how do I get the word out? Then it can sometimes be so difficult also because you are an expert. You are level 10, but your customers are level one. They are beginners. Right. And so this is what happens for most highly sensitive experts, which is so sad because they have an expertise of maybe 20 or 100, but most of the experts out there are level two. So they speak an easier language for the customer. So the customers end up with an expert who is not an expert, but really just knows some steps more than they do. Because mm -hmm. when he's naturally talking, it's nearly the same level. And this is the uh -huh. big question, like how to break down your message and your knowledge on your experience so much down that your customers understand this is for me without getting overwhelmed but just knowing like okay this is this is the entry point so you don't present them the whole thing but just right. the entry point like here's the door if you like to enter this is what will happen so very small right. small small steps is what i'm hearing you talking about so and so do you think that 
because I heard you say this and I, I just want to make sure that I understand this correct, that you think that highly sensitive people have massive expertise, but they don't have the language or they don't know how to communicate that, <clears throat> excuse me, to the people who need their services who may be at level one and highly sensitive people may be at level 20 with their expertise. Yes. But because the people who are at uh, uh, expert, expert level of two or three, speak a language that's closer to what the customer can hear, Yes, the customers seem to gravitate to them. Exactly. So we need to find a way to kind of tone it down and speak the language that our people can understand. Yes. And, and then the frustration comes and the self-doubt, like I know so much, I have this experience I, and we feel it in our body, this is true. Like I'm really, without being arrogant or something, but just knowing like, I'm really good in what I'm doing. Mm. But why are the people going over there? And then you start doubting yourself and think maybe I'm not good enough. Maybe I need to buy this other course and improve <laughs> my skills. What yes. happens then is you rise from level 20 to 25 and the words you use overwhelm your people even more. And this is like a vicious cycle. And then finally you wonder like, maybe I should just get a day job. Maybe it's just not working. And on the other hand, you know, like the customers that you have, they are super satisfied. They can like they you cannot stop them from recommending you because they go crazy. They like it's not this normal like customer um, service um, relationship, but it's a, like a friendship or like you really care. It's like yes. not like it's similar like a friendship. Like it's real care, yes. and they feel it. And this it's, is like, it's a deep relationship, yes. Exactly, yes. Deep and connection. Then, yes, and then the confusion is there. Like, what is missing? Like, I have this expertise. The customers that I have are, are super happy, but I just can't get new ones, or they just don't get it. Or the more I talk, the more I confuse, and they go like this. Yeah. Um, and then you want to share more because you feel like you haven't said the right thing. And yes, this right. it's. In the end, it's the message, like, what do you communicate? And this right. also has to do with humility and really getting down from your <laughs> level 20 expertise, mm -hmm. like climbing down the mountain that you climbed, like your own transformation, yes. and getting to where the customer is standing and really getting away from your light or taking your light down the valley and mm -hmm. bringing it like the small candle to the customer and saying like, hey, there on the mountaintop, on the summit, there's a big fire waiting for you. But I, I know you cannot handle like the big fire now. So just a candle, just a glimpse. Ah, oh, that is so beautiful. And I think in our previous conversation, what I can remember you saying is that is part of the service. That is how we are of service when we can come down from our mountaintop. Yes. And bring the little candle. Mm -hmm. That is part of the heart. It says, I'm, I'm, I, I know that's what my people can take in right now. Yes. Yes. Yeah. That's beautiful. Oh, Thomas, this is so valuable already. So what I'd like to start then, let's go a few steps back. And if you can explain to us, what is it when we talk about authentic marketing and yeah, so let's start there. What is authentic marketing? Yes. So in the end, authentic marketing for me is just, in the end, just being true. Like really say what you mean without the second agenda behind. Mm -hmm. um, but just, for example, if I invite people for a workshop, I tell them, I'd love to have you there. This is what you get. Um, this is the journey you go through, the transformation. This is how your life can look afterwards. And then just saying there are 15 seats or there's 50 seats or whatever, the workshop is happening then and I'd really love to have you there. But then, and this is what it makes different, just mm -hmm. staying there, open with invitation instead of moving somewhere like this mm -hmm. or also hiding is also not authentic, but yes. just this movement that, that is involved, just letting go of that and really resting in, in your offer and just like radiating it outside, I could say. Mm. And it's also a shift from marketing from here, like how do I get customers, blah, 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 all this stuff that is here, yeah. to do it from here, 
and spreading the word from here. Mm -hmm. And the words can be nearly the same, but the feeling behind what people sense, especially highly sensitive people, this is what, where the main difference is. You feel like, wow, that feels nice. I'm attracted to this. I, I, I'd like to learn more about it. And then when the steps are clear, like, oh, here's the first glimpse, the little candle. Oh, that looks nice. This is interested, uh, interesting. I like it. And then you go, okay, now I've eaten this candle. So where's the next one? Now I'm ready for the bigger one. So it's okay. also next. So one thing is the heart, like making heart braced. The other thing is make, like really serving your customer because I believe that your service doesn't start when the customer has given you the money or the client, mm -hmm. but it starts with marketing because already the marketing is part of the transformation your people right. go through. And some people say, okay, I just take the step in reading your marketing material and it's already transformation for me. I, I get a glimpse. I finally see hope. I see the light. And some people choose to go on the journey with you. And some say, okay, this is nice, but it's not for me or it's not the right time. But alone, like this mind shift in seeing my marketing as service, my marketing already is part of my work. It's already helping people. This alone can like change your relationship to marketing so that it's not like I need customers and am I greedy and all that kind of stuff. But hey, I'm serving by like this interview with you now. It's yes. part of my marketing also. It's part of getting the message out. And in the end, it's not really about me because I mean, there's so many ways to make a living. And when you're above the stage of like, how can I pay my bills? I know for a lot of highly sensitive people, what they care about is caring and like having an impact in the world. Yes. And this is like what I'm burning for. So it's like when you focus on being of service and improving the lives of others, abundance and that kind of stuff um, for yourself will be a side effect, but it's not what really matters because right. I mean, money doesn't fulfill anyone, but knowing you're doing the right thing and you're getting something back for it so that you can sustain yourself. This is where like humility comes in again, where it's really, where it's out of the connection and also receiving and not just like, because a lot of, especially highly sensitive, block away this, uh, I shouldn't receive this kind of stuff is going on there. Yes. So I do my work, but I don't allow the feeling that I receive from others that, that are great, so grateful for what I do. But if you do, it just touches you. And it like cracks your heart open and just find yourself on the floor in humility. This is what happens to me often in tears because you feel so blessed to be able to do this work. And it's just, it just, yeah, it's just an incredible feeling. <laughs> yes, it's, it's a real privilege if we get to work to the people with the people who actually are our people. And that give us a feeling like I really did what I came here to do. I'm yeah. making a difference. And we can't get to that work unless we get this marketing piece right. Yes. That, that's what's so frustrating, what you mentioned in the beginning. So I heard you say, and I think that's a really important point that I just want to highlight, that if we can see our marketing already as part of the service, it's yeah. not at this what I'm doing today in my marketing may or may not lead to customers, but I've already made an impact in the world. If I get this marketing piece right in the way that speaks to my heart and speaks to other people's hearts. Yes. Yeah. So, so in contrast, uh, Thomas, what is, so that's authentic marketing. Mm -hmm. We sort of spoke a little bit about the other types right in the beginning. Can you just remind us? So like, what is, inauthentic or I don't know what would you call it just you know the old way of marketing how, how does that look in contrast to this so I would say it starts with a big I a me that wants to have a personal benefit and doesn't care about the rest too much but the it cares maybe a little bit but the main interest is keeping me alive and I need or I want no matter if it's true for my heart or not I have this idea 
and I will make it happen no matter what the cost. Right. Not only no matter what the cost for others, but also for myself. But you often pay with uh, health problems on the long run, stuff like that. You don't sleep well at night because deep inside you know it's wrong what you do. Right. Like, um, yeah, and it's not, yeah, and the customers you have, you have cheated them into buying. They wouldn't have bought um, by free will, by their own decision, but you, you manipulated them so that they bought. So you cannot even be satisfied by what you do because you know it's fake. Right. It's just all made up and it, it takes a lot of energy to keep this game running. And the bigger the game becomes, the more energy you need to put in because it doesn't happen naturally. Right. I can see that. Yes. So you have this like treadmill, which is growing on the outside. It looks like you become more and more successful and other people are looking up to you, which you like because deep down you feel self doubt because you know, it's all fake. <laughs> and in the inside you are afraid that you like that the treadmill will just like destroy you which is also going to happen so it becomes like more and more tense right the pressure from outside gets higher and higher because you want to sustain this image of wow i'm successful because this is what you deep down long for yes um, yeah, and then hopefully you learn the lesson fast and something happens or otherwise something will happen that for me, like the burnout that I had that right. says, okay, Thomas, it's good now, now stop, like now just stop this bullshit. Right. So that's what happened for you is in this, like trying to pretend that this marketing thing's working for me and um, that's when your burnout happened. Is, is that how it went yeah part or for me it was another story um but okay. it can be a story like this to, okay to keep it yeah. yes 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 i've i've <laughs> i've really come across this pretty often in fact a person that we both know had exactly this happen for them it's like big success mm. big mm. programs big um targeting kind of languaging yeah. and like you said there's this huge goal mm -hmm. it's like a hard goal and i need to reach that goal no matter what the cost yes and also one thing is it's always like future oriented so you're yes. never in the present it's always like when i have achieved this goal then i will be happy then i will be fulfilled right so and it never happens the only thing that happens is you get stressed more stressed out every day you lose more energy you lose your health like you're paying the high price like your relationships like just fall apart or like decrease um so it's a little it's a process it doesn't happen like from today to tomorrow but like it's really your your life's quality is going down with every second with every day yeah until it finally falls apart or something or if you're blessed, something happens that just like gives you the kick or the push in the right direction that you need. Right. Right. Yeah. yeah there's a lot of anxiety in that. Like if only I, it's for women, it's, it's often like, you know, if I lose this five Ks, I'll allow me to myself to be happy. Or if I, you know, yeah. if I just, it's this future stuff. It's like, we, we never arrive. We, we yeah. just don't arrive. So <laughs> we don't get to have a happy life. Yeah. So I'd love to ask you next, what mistakes do you see entrepreneurs make in their business? Oh, <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's a huge question. Um, so let's see, maybe highly sensitive people. I, I break it down a little, right? That's perfect. Fantastic. That's who we're talking to today. Um, the first thing which I often see is having too, this is more in the start period, like having too many projects or ideas. Um, and this is also the thing, if you're an expert, like on so many levels, like how to put it on all in, in one direction, how to streamline it. Yes. Um, and one solution for it is um, to remember and or to, to be aware of what you're good at. For example, I just love communication. Mm -hmm. And I love working one on one with people. I love talking. <laughs> I love interviews. I love sharing what I've discovered. 
Yeah. I love uh, group coachings or workshops. And I don't really care too much about the subject. So this is one really important thing. It's like the subject is like the little details. Like it's, it's the top of the iceberg, right? And you can get lost there. Um, because is it this detail or that detail? Uh, and realizing it doesn't really matter. What really matters is I want to be of service. And I've realized some things in my life. Um, I've gone through a transformation. And I, it might be helpful for others. So I want to share it. So this is one of the biggest mistakes. And if you realize, so if I, when I realize, like, I just love talking, I love coaching and consulting. And I also see marketing um, as coaching because it's connecting customer and offer. So right. marketing is out of love. If I, can, if I have uh, entrepreneurs and I can help them to, like, to, to bring them together with their customers. I enjoy it as much as a personal coaching. Which brings me to the second point that a lot of highly sensitive people choose niches uh, where they don't get paid. So they have this huge value that they can bring to their customers, but they choose a context which prevents them to receive and also to make it sustainable. And then they start thinking about the day job or like, okay, this is nothing. And then they are about to give up serving the world in the way they could because of just doing the, this decision of choosing the, the wrong customers. So it's really right. important to find a context where you can get paid. Otherwise, it's like, it's no business. It's right. a hobby then. It's a charity. Yes. Can, and, <clears throat> excuse me, can you give us an example of what you've seen, uh, you know, a sort of a niche that, that is in a place where, for instance, I mean, if we do work in a sort of way people generally expect charity mm -hmm. or some free services, then it's possibly a hard one to earn an, an income in. So have you seen examples? Yes, or I can give you my own painful story as an example because there's the most, uh, I feel the most pain or I also have learned my lesson. Yes. So when I started these workshops for highly sensitive people, I myself came out of a crisis. So the people I choose and like what I was talking about was how to get out of a burnout, out of a crisis. Mm -hmm. So the people that came to me were the same people. Mm -hmm. And in Germany, we have a strong social system. So um, healthcare is paid, uh, psychologists are paid, therapy is paid. So mm -hmm. I had a niche of people who had nearly no money, who were in a situation where they had lost their job or something, where they could get the help of the government. They would have paid oh. for it. And I was competing with them and telling people without money, hey, please buy my stuff. Like, I really want to help you. But and so for for the, in inside this niche, I had people coming to me to my talk, which was donation based, um, recommended three euro, which is like a small Tiny. amount of money for some people. Yes. But some said like, or I remember this situation when one guy showed up and said, "Oh, three euro, ah, that much I don't have with me. I need to go to the ATM." Wow. And then the the another example then. Um, I went to a conference I, and I knew the, the organizers, like the facilitators. And I just wrote them an email and said like, hey, I bring my camera anyhow. So if you like, I can do some video or uh, a photo because this is my background. And they said, okay, we don't have a budget, but can you do something for a thousand euro? <laughs> and this is the difference. And imagine, right? In the first example, I felt like I have to fight or like... Um, justify that three euro is okay for the talk mm. and felt like I, I need to like what is this it's like he is, is not willing to pay even three euro yes and on the other hand thousand euro no problem yes huge difference in the feeling that it leaves the person who's on the earning side with you know yes, yes. I'm the same person but in this place I'm not valuable or I'm not valued or people can't pay me. And in this side is like, no problem. You're worth, we think you're worth much more, but we can only pay this. And to you, it's like, oh, yes. what a difference. Yes. And this is choosing the right niche. 
Yeah. And for sure, you can also do like serving the niche that doesn't have money, but as a charity. But don't make the mistake of trying to serve them first because you need me to make a living. Otherwise, you cannot help them. And this was really a lesson for me because for sure I chose the niche because it had something to do with me. Yes. Right? It's where you came from. So you identified with how they felt and you were on the same page, but it wasn't the person who was going to be able to pay you. Exactly. Right. And, and see with these um, B2B clients, I only needed like two to three to make a living like very easily. So, and it was so easy, right? It was like, Hey, do you need a video? Okay. I can do one for you. Or do you need some consulting? I can do it. So it's like similar what I do. Yes. Communication and yes. helping them to find customers, which I love, but just the co the context was different. Mm. So, and this is also the thing. So you can stay true to yourself and just wonder like what I offer where are the people who not only need it, but who can also afford it um, and are willing to, to spend the money for? Right. So and you still is, offer the same sort of thing, but just in a very different context. Yes. yes. And you see, now I have grown and evolved. So I see for me, it was necessary to pick this niche to really get a mirror for what I feel deep inside and really until it was completely released. And then I felt like this is no longer true for me. Um, this doesn't work. This highly sensitivity stuff, like I, I'm just fed up with it or I'm done with it. And mm -hmm. I feel like I'm repeating myself again and again and again. So it's like, it becomes boring. And then I realized this authentic marketing already uh, clients were coming. I don't know where they were coming from. It just happened that I just saw like <laughs> my balance sheet and realized 90% of um, that year's income was marketing, but 95% of my energy I put into the highly sensi high sensitivity business. Oh. And then I realized, okay, what I had failed a long time that this high sensitivity stuff is a charity. And I always knew it deep inside my heart. It's not meant for a living. I want to give it. It's like, I love it, mm. but it's not meant as income source. But this marketing, there I felt empowered. Like, yes, this is where I also can easily talk about money. In the high, high sensitivity field, it was always like, like this. Yeah. <laughs> I hear you. <laughs> I've come across it as well that they're very like, oh, no, you know, money is a very touchy subject. We shouldn't talk about it. It's uh, too, exactly. uh, too, I don't know, icky or something. It's not spiritual enough. So <laughs> yes. we think, oh, no, not money. And here comes the magic um, to, to sum it up, like what I said in the beginning with make, breaking the message down. So imagine what happens when there are people who are not highly sensitive mm -hmm. or who are highly sensitive, but are maybe they have a great career or whatever. And they are looking for exactly what you like, what you are or this quality that you have in your life not caring too much about money and like the material things, but really being rooted in yourself, knowing who you are, being true to yourself. And when you put this together, it's so amazing because for other highly sensitive people or in, in a similar situation, the value of the, your service is much lower priced also because it's like they, they might have done coaching, um, courses uh, got their thousand certificates that kind of stuff so just another coaching is different from a person who might be for example successful in the material world but is deeply longing for something that is just most natural for you so he'll also much pay much much more and be happy for it because he see, sees such value in your offer Right. So that's the thing about finding the people who can truly, truly, truly need what you have to offer. Yes. And this is the thing. So it's also not because I sense that some people in your audience might think like, yeah, but am I then only about money and just looking for the rich guy? Yes. That's not what I mean. But it's about like, for whom 
do you have the highest benefit and why should you have why should you focus on giving having a lower like less benefit mm. it doesn't it doesn't it doesn't make any sense so i'm always looking for like what person can i help most what person gets most of what i offer like who needs me who needs the service most and this is right. the people i want to work with right okay there's so much in that that we can explore um and before we do that i just like to check is there and is the, did you have any other mistakes that that highly sensitive people make in their marketing or business um yes so one thing is offer too much i'm doing this and this and this and this and this and this and that yes. so it's the overwhelm right. <laughs> so it's really important to streamline it and see like what's the root like of all the branches who come out what's the root um or, or the seed like where's really where is it really coming from what's the if i distill it what's the one sentence that i can say um so people understand oh this is interesting And then my offers are just like different branches or yeah, out of the same thing. Right. Um, one other big, huge mistake, maybe the biggest of all is not listening to their heart because deep yeah. inside they know what's true to them. And especially in the field of marketing, there are so many people talking about it. So many experts who say one expert says this, the next one says the opposite and then we get confused. Right. Yes. And then you wonder, like, whom should I believe now? Don't believe them, believe yourself. Because deep inside, you already know what is true for you. You know what to do. You know also what teachings you need um, or, or what lessons you need to learn. You will n know, like, to, to what teacher you are attracted or marketing guy or whatever. So just stay true to yourself and just really follow your heart. There is no other way. Um, especially if you work with other highly sensitive people because they will notice in a, in a second if it's true what you say or not and they will turn away when they feel no it's just a concept you grab from from somewhere but it doesn't resonate it doesn't feel authentic it's not for me yes yes so okay this, staying true to your heart so i'm hearing also that that's a little it may be a bit of a process because we indoctrinated so much uh, programmed mm -hmm. from the outsiders here you should listen to the experts and here's this one and here's this one and perhaps there haven't been too many highly sensitive marketing experts mm -hmm. helping us to tune in to what yes. is true for us then yes so and it's, see, it's letting go of the programming yeah. exactly and it's a different paradigm right so the paradigm the normal market design is i'm the boss i tell you what you should do and you do exactly as i do and then you will be successful yes yes the six steps you need to follow yeah the magic formula the the next shiny object yes but authentic marketing is and also how i see myself it's just like i do coaching i am giving nothing as input or like 99 is the transformation and just giving space for my client so that they can just find out who they are and what's natural for them. And then a little information is needed here and one there, but it falls in the right place. It's like then, then the hunger for it is there from the heart. Like, ah, now I, ah, now, now I feel it inside and now I'm excited, but what to do now? And often, most often they also know this, so it's really it's 99 is inside and just a thing of like getting it clear yes and i think in life we just don't have those pauses we don't give it to ourselves to take exactly. the pause and for somebody else to hold that safe space for us to do that yes is the value so oh this was amazing do you have so i think we'll we'll be coming to a close shortly and there's just so much more that we can explore and maybe we'll have another chat yeah, uh, with, with <laughs> deeper uh, bits but is there are there any last words uh, Thomas that you can leave us with about authentic marketing or about anything for highly sensitive people in the end like I have said it just be true to your heart be true to yourself yeah. and also I'd highly recommend to shut down the news feeds on facebook and all the 
Facebook groups or newsletters from marketers who teach the other way because it's just not for you. There's nothing wrong about it. There are people for whom it is who love it. It's fine. So there's no judgment. Like if you're mind-based or operating mind-based, it's all good. That's the way marketing works. But if you're not like this, if you want to do hard-based marketing, like just get rid of all the noise of all the stuff where you feel like maybe I should do and, and maybe uh, I feel like uh, because then your greedy mind or like that thing which is not resolved inside of you, which is not clear, that jumps on the train again and you just lose time and money and yeah, months where you could serve people. Um, and the next thing is, which I highly recommend, get real. Like online marketing is really nice. Um, but what matters is the connection. And the best thing you can do is just be clear or get clear on who your ideal customers are, the customers that you can help most. Mm -hmm. And then just find out where they are hanging around, where they are, and go to them and talk to them in one-on-one -on -one calls. You can even say like, hey, I offer this free coaching. Uh, like a trial session. I do it myself that way. Um, where it's just about your customer. You just ask questions like, where you, are you now? Where do you want to go? Or what's your goal? And what prevented you in the past to achieve this goal? And what would you need to get there? Just these four questions. And just listen. Don't say anything, but listen. And afterwards, they might ask you like, hey, can you help me with this? Or you feel like naturally that, ah, there's something they don't know. You start talking about it and you get excited. So maybe a client comes out, but also if not, this is just research, right? Yeah. So it's just like getting to know your people. And this is what happened with my authentic marketing for the highly sensitive people. After 12 talks and like having seen thousands and really literally thousands of people live and in person reacting to what I say. After a year, I knew exactly what to put on my website. I didn't, I didn't need to think about it. So this is also one thing. Don't scale too much. Don't put up a website too soon because you can sit there for months if you don't know what to say. And you can only find out what to say if you talk to your people, if you talk to your ideal clients. And then it's just like, really, like when, when, I, put a, when I set up my website, it was a deal of hours to write the text the like the complete text for my website it was just like writing great my best friend just like hey done because you knew them already you knew the problems you know what they wanted you knew exactly. what was in the way yes that's fantastic yes we need to get yeah. talking to people exactly and then it becomes natural right then it's not mm. i want to do content marketing what blog articles could i post but you have heard from a hundred people they have this problem. You naturally want to help them. And it just happens that you say, okay, now so many people have this problem. I should really help them. I just write a blog article. Or maybe I could even do a workshop because I think, yeah, why not? So you offer this, but out of service and not out of how can I get more conversions? How can I pay my rent? How can I achieve this? Yes. So just connect and the rest will follow. And if you're disconnected, then just really, literally, just when I have a day where I feel bad, the best thing I can do is have an appointment, um, like a trial session mm -hmm. uh, with one of my clients. No matter how much fear there is, no matter how down I am, it's the best thing because it puts me back in the game of, it's not about me, it's not about the little hurt me, ego me, but it's about serving. And the first 10 minutes are often hard and like I really struggle. But then this rush of energy comes back and the excitement and there's someone I can help. And then, it, yes. and then the flow is there again. Yes. So if yes. you feel like hiding in a cave, then go out. <laughs> exactly. Do the exact opposite of what you really feel like doing in that moment. And it absolutely, I can agree. I can't agree with you more when I've had a bad day and I see a client. Uh -huh. The whole world changes for me. Yeah. So, <laughs> so isn't that, that is, beautiful? Yes. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> yes. Yes. How fantastic is that, that we can feel so good by just being in contact with one person. And we, it can be 
a little bit that they're better, but the fact that we made that difference yeah, helps yeah. us to come alive. So, Thomas, this has been incredibly valuable, and I know there's 10 more conversations here that we can oh, yeah. have about different <laughs> aspects of this. And for now, um, would you like to just let us know where people might find you? And I'll also put it in the, in the notes of our conversation. Where's the best um, place? Yes, so one thing is I have my Facebook page, which I love because people can ask questions and I can shoot live videos or videos. Um, and I really encourage people to just ask their questions there because I want to help. Yes. <laughs> it's really like I'm here. There's so much I learned in the last like seven or eight years about marketing and it's all there, but it wants out. So I need to, it's also a relief for me to get it out into the world. Right. Um, and then I also have my kind of website, but I really, it's, it's authentic minus marketing.net, but mm -hmm. there's really nothing on it because I am so busy with like interacting one uh, on a yes. one. Um, so it's really, was also really for me to let go of this website. I knew the website uh, <laughs> thought. Right. That may so be maybe, another mistake, right? Yes. So, you have so, to have a website. Yes, so maybe there's a website, maybe not. There's a contact formula in any case. <laughs> Perfect. Um, yes. Great. So what I'll do, uh, Thomas, and for our listeners, is just to put the, the link uh, to yes. the full Facebook page in our notes, and it will be easily clickable. So thank you so, so much, Thomas. This has been incredibly valuable, inspiring again, and reminded me of certain things that it's sort of uh, it's like, yes, yes, that is really important. So thank you so much for sharing with us all this value. You're welcome. And thank you for our listeners. It's just uh, really a privilege for us that you choose to spend time with us today because I know uh, everybody has a busy lives. So thank you for spending this time with us. And yes. we wish you a beautiful day. I wish you the same. And yes, just like a blessing and, and thank you. And also to all the highly sensitive people out there in the world that know I have something to give. It, it wants and needs to go out there to make such a difference in this world, especially in this time, it's incredible. Like we need you. It's really needed to get a shift in the, like in a positive direction for humanity. So this is what I see. It's, yes. it's really needed. It's not just like, I want to do it, but hey, if we don't go for it and if we don't like lighten up this planet, like there's no one else. Yes, it's up to us. I love that. So we're part of a bigger purpose. Yeah, it really is. Thank yeah. you so much. Thank you, Thomas.